Hey there, in this video we are going to look at how we convert from a fraction to a decimal. So we will look at two methods, um, but to be honest with you, the quickest method to really make sure to save you time on the test would be actually to memorize um, some of those more basic and more common fraction to decimal conversions, and that can just help you um, save a little bit of time on the test. So when we are given a fraction, we can use long division to convert to a decimal. And in order to do that, we just divide the top by the bottom. So I'm going to start with this 21.4, and I'm sorry, 21 over four, and we are going to go ahead and divide that, and that will turn it into a decimal. So if I put 21, the top number underneath, and then four, the bottom number outside, I can see four does not go into two, um, so that's gonna be a zero up top. And then we can go to 21. So 4 goes into 21, a total of 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Now that will, when I subtract, give me 1, which is not a remainder of 0. And so what I need to do as a reminder would be to put a point 0 there. Because 4 will not go into 1, I put that 0 there, bring it down, and put um, it next to the 1, and that will become 10. So now 4, does 4 go into 10? 4 does go into 10, not evenly, but it does go into 10 two times. So I can keep that decimal point in the same spot in my quotient, in my answer. But I'm going to have a 2 there, because 2 times 4 will give me 8. Subtract 10 minus 8, and I get 2. Again, 4 does not go evenly into 2, and 2 is not a remainder of 0, so I do need to keep dividing. So I put another 0 there, and when I put that 0 there and bring it down, that is now 20. 4 does go into 20, and it goes in evenly. So it will be um, 0.25 there, because 5 times 4 is 20. When you subtract that, you get a remainder of 0. And we've used all the numbers up top, and we have a remainder of 0, so my answer would be 5.25. So that is one way to use long division to turn a fraction um, into a decimal. And if you notice here, the 21 on top is bigger than the four on the bottom, which means this is an improper fraction. So when you divide, you should have a number other than zero in that spot before the decimal point, because this is bigger than one, because the top is bigger than the bottom number. So keep that in mind when you are dividing. Now we can look at number two. This time we see the top is smaller than the bottom and we're working with a little bit of a bigger number here on the bottom. So we are still gonna do the same thing. So we'll set up our division and we have eight divided by 256. Now right off the bat, 256 is not going to go into eight. So I need to put a decimal point and put um, a zero after it. Now ignoring that decimal point, 256 doesn't go into 80. So I need to put another zero there. So 800, 256 will go into. So um, not necessarily evenly, we'll find out here in a second, but that means it didn't work for the eight. So I put a zero and then I bring that decimal point up. Didn't work for 80, so I have another zero there. It did work for 800. So 800 and 256, if you think about 256, um, even just round it for a second to 250 to get an estimate. If you do 250, and let's just start with um, the two in front, two times, or 200 times four is gonna give you 800. So we know that 200 would go into eight, 800 four times, but we're at 256, so it's not gonna even work four times. So I'm gonna drop it down to three and see what happens. Um, and now that I kind of estimated that, I'm gonna change this to the exact 256 times three and see if that works. 256 times 3, if you use your long or your long multiplication, 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 5 is 15. Add the 1, you get 16. Carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Add the 1, you get 7. So 768. So that is less than 800. If I try to go up to 256 times 4, um, notice if I added 256 to the 768, that would put me over 800. So that's not going to work. So 3 is what will go right here. 3 times 256 is 768. And you're going to subtract that. Now you can use the long subtraction method, cancel out um, or cross out zeros and turn it into tens and 10 and nine and, and go on from there. Or you can think about this mental math. If I have 800, 
and I'm subtracting 768, you can think about counting up from 768 to 800, um, or for example, 770 to 800. Um, if I go 770 to 800, that's gonna be 30. And then I have another two from 768 to 770. So that's gonna be um, 32 when you subtract this. And then once I have 32, then I look to see does 256 go into that 32? No, 256 can't go into 32. So I am going to have to put another zero here and bring that down. So now it's 320. 320, 256 will go into 320. If I double this, uh, 256, even if I just look at it as 200 for a second and round it to an even 200, 200 times two is 400, which is already over that 320. So I know that it only works one time. One times 256 will be 256. Now this one's a little bit harder to count up like we did for 768 to the even 800. So I'll probably just use my long subtraction here, change this into a 10. If I borrow, then this becomes a one. So 10 minus six is four. Now we can't do one minus five without getting a negative. So then I'm gonna go ahead and cross out that one to be an 11. If I borrow, then I need to turn that down to a two. So now we have 11 minus five, which is six, and then two minus two is zero. So it's just 64. Now you notice 256 will not go into 64. So we need to put another zero, bring that zero down and then put it next to the 64. Again, we can kind of estimate 200 will go into 600 three times. Uh, we just did the 256 times three and got 768. And since we already did that, we know that that's too high. So I know that I need to use two. So two times 256, that one we do need to do. And you could very well do this in your head. It just depends on where you're at and your confidence with multiplying. Two times six is 12. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5, so 512. So with that, we need to go ahead and subtract. So I will go ahead and switch this to a 10. Drop this down to a 3. 10 minus 2 is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 6 minus 5 is 1. So again, 256 will not go into 128, so we keep going. So we have a zero right here. And when we bring that zero down, we have 1,280. So now we need to see if 1,280 will go into um, 256 or the other way around. So 256, we want to kind of estimate to start, if you think about 200, um, and putting that into 1,200, that's about six times. Now we have 256, so six probably won't work. So in my head, I'm probably thinking, let's try five. So 256 times five. Five times six is 30, carry the three. Five times five is 25, add three and you get 28, carry the two. Five times two is 10, plus two is 12. And that's exactly 1280. So five works out perfectly which means when we multiply it, we get 1280, and then we subtract and we get zero. So our answer on this one would be 0 0.03125. So let's go ahead and look at our second method. So this is an alternate method to the long division that we just went through. Um, sometimes it works great using this method. Sometimes it's not as efficient as long division or just memorizing. Um, overall, memorizing will typically be the quickest way um, to convert a decimal to a fraction or a fraction to a decimal. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, in this method, we will use these three steps. So with this, we will convert the denominator into either a 10, 100, 1000, anything that's a one followed by only zeros after that. So we will find a whole number to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by to make the denominator this 10 or 100 or 1000 or 10,000 or so on and so on. So again, once we find that number, then we multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by that number. And then that will convert it into a denominator of a 10, 100, 1000, so on and so on. So that will then be um, the fraction that we use to create our decimal by putting the decimal point in the correct spot in the numerator. And so that is going to be one space from the right hand side 
for every zero in the bottom number. And I'm going to talk about what that means here in just a second. So to start with number 17 over 20, number 3, 17 over 20, we want to figure out what can we turn this denominator into that's either a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000, so on and so on. So looking at this one, we have 17 over 20. 20 can be multiplied um, by 5 to turn it into 100. And if we multiply the bottom by 5, then we need to multiply the top by 5 as well. So I notice I picked 5 because the 10 won't work because 20 is already bigger than 10. And even though I could divide by 2, I can't divide 17 by 2 to get a, um, to get a whole number. So the easiest way in this method would be to take 20, multiply by 5 to get it to be 100 on the bottom. Now, at that point, we want to go ahead and do 17 times 5. And if you don't know that in your head, then we can come over to the side and do that. 7 times 5 is 35, so carry the 3. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. So 8 so we get 85, which is going to go in the top of our fraction. So 85 over 100. Now there are two zeros in the denominator. So that tells us there are two decimal digits. And if there are two decimal digits, then we go ahead and we bring that decimal point that's on the top to the left two. Or in other words, um, there are two numbers after the decimal point. So it's going to go 0.85. So our answer for this one will be 0 0.85 for our decimal version. So looking at number four, we have 135 over eight. So on this one, notice the top number is bigger than the bottom. So when we get our final answer, we should have a whole number before the decimal point other than zero, um, because this is a number that is bigger than one. So if we look at changing 135 over eight into a fraction where we have a 10 or a 100 or 1000 or something along those lines in the denominator, start with 10. 8 times a whole number will not give us 10, so we can go ahead and rule that out. Now, 100, if you think through your multiplication facts, 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 11 is going to be 88. 8 times 12 is going to be 96. And then 8 times 13, either in your head or using long multiplication, you get 104. So I know that there is no whole number between 12 and 13, so that means that we can't get 8 times a number to get us 100, so that doesn't work. Now 1,000, 1,000 is a little bit um, more difficult to use just our general multiplication facts, so I might go through and um, I might think about 1,000 divided by 8 and think about what can I get 8 to multiply by to be 1,000. Um, and if you think about 8 times something to get a thousand, we can go through this long or long division real quick. Eight into ten. Eight divides into ten one time. One times eight is eight. Then subtract and we get two. Bring down the zero, you get twenty. So that's going to be two times. So two times eight is going to be sixteen. Subtract and you get four. Bring down the zero and you get forty. Eight goes into forty five times. So that's going to be 5 times 8, which is 40, and that's going to give us a remainder of 0. So 125, we can use that number to multiply um, the denominator and the numerator by to turn this into a fraction that will have a number on the bottom that is 1 and then followed by zeros. So in this case, it would be 1,000 on the bottom because 8 times 125 is 1,000. And then 135 times 125 if you do 135 and you multiply by 125, when you do that, you'll go through your long multiplication process. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 3 is 15. 16 is 17 when you add it. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Then we put a 0. Cross these out and go to the next number. So 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6. Add 1, you get 7. 2 times 1 is 2. And then we have two zeros, go to one. One times five is five. One times three is three. One times one is one. Add down these columns and you get five, seven. Six plus five is 11 
plus 7 is going to be 18. Carry the 1. 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 1. So we have 1, 6, 8, 7, 5 on the top over 1,000. And again, since we have three zeros, then we're going to have three decimal digits in our answer. So when we turn this top into a decimal, it's going to be 16.875. Now, as you can see, neither one of these was essentially the most efficient method either. This one was a little bit easier because if you knew 20 times 5 gives you 100, then it's a little more straightforward. This one, I would say, would probably be easier, honestly, to either just memorize your um, eighths and what those decimals are or um, to use long division to do 135 divided by 8 and get this that way. So it just depends on what numbers you are working with, but that shows you how you can do it. It's just, again, finding the most efficient method. So in summary, we have two methods. We have the long division method, which will work every time. So again, we can use that on any method um, or any problem. And at any point, it's just not always the most efficient method. But um, the second method also doesn't work all of the time and isn't necessarily the most efficient. So it's convenient when you have bases like uh, 20 or 5 or 10 or things that easily turn into these. That's when we um, typically will use that second method as opposed to like an 8. We'd have to multiply that by 125, which again isn't necessarily the, the most efficient method depending on what numbers you're working with.